All right, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about uh, one of the hottest social networks at the moment, which is uh, Instagram. The thing about Instagram is it's not very old, but it's very popular. So I'm going to take a quick look at the Wikipedia article on um, Instagram, just for a little brief history, and then uh, we'll get started using it. So over at wikipedia.org, you can do this if you'd like, or I'll just do it quickly. I'm going to look up Instagram. Instagram. So Instagram, uh, they're on their pledge drive at the moment, so they're going to be asking for donations on Wikipedia, and it's very affordable, $3, and you can donate to Wikipedia. Uh, tax time is coming up, and remember, donations can be valuable. But anyway, uh, the Instagram uh, article... Uh, it's a pretty big article, apparently. Information on the right side, the big names behind Instagram, the authors and such. And uh, it doesn't even feel like that. It feels much younger, but uh, October 2010 is when Instagram debuted. Uh, and I remember, I don't remember how I heard about it, but I remember hearing about Instagram at, in the beginning. And within the first week, I had signed up. So yes, I'm a hipster. I've been on, on Instagram before all of you. Uh, since week one. And so um, it's been evolving, it's in 25 languages, and it was so valuable about a year and a half later or so, Facebook bought them um, for about a billion dollars, literally. They did pay uh, like 1.2 billion dollars for Instagram. And a lot of us that used it and loved it at the time thought this is the end of Instagram because uh, I may have mentioned it in other classes, but I'll say that Instagram is not my favorite network. It's like the, in last place of all the networks. I don't like the philosophy behind Facebook, the people behind Facebook, the intrusion of Facebook. So on a personal level, I don't like Facebook. But for business, I love Facebook. Uh, it really helps you reach an audience. So when it was announced that Facebook was going to buy Instagram for a billion dollars, the consensus among the users was, well, Facebook is going to ruin it. Facebook is going to change it put ads into it and just really ruin it. And actually, amazingly, they, they didn't. They left it alone. They left the team to do as they will and keep working on it. And um, it's been the same Instagram basically since the beginning with tweaks here and there. Uh, the latest update, however, has included that now uh, there is advertising in, in Instagram. Uh, so perhaps for the user, that's not so good. I don't want to see ads within my uh, my, within my stream, but for businesses, that's good because you can then reach an audience that cares about your product or your brand or whatever you're trying to do online. Well, it shows here February uh, 2012 for about a billion dollars. And at the moment, uh, it is a very fast growing network. It already has about 400 million users globally, whereas Twitter has about 320 million. So Instagram has surpassed uh, Twitter. And this statistic, which is a little out of date, but it said in 2013, uh, Instagram grew by 23%, while Facebook, its parent company, grew by 3%. Now that's two years old, so take that with a grain of salt. But um, this is a good article to read because it tells you about the history of Instagram and trends. We will see... Um, about getting into trends in Instagram. One of the big trends is this hashtag. Make a note of this. Hashtag TBT. Every Thursday it's tradition that you post on Instagram something related to what is called Throwback Thursday, TBT, which is something from the past. So let's say if I've got my personal Instagram, I upload a picture of myself when I'm five years old, and I tag it, hashtag TBT. So then I'm part of the I'm part of the trend uh, of posting, you know, classic stuff. And I've seen very creative uses of this, even for businesses. Let's say, for example, McDonald's. They engage in it too. They put a photo of look at our McDonald's from 1961, or look at this uh, commercial from 1982, hashtag TBT. So. 
That's something we'll explore. And then there's also the weekend hashtag project, <clears throat> which is a community-based project based on, on concepts to, to upload. And then, of course, selfie, a self-portrait photography typically taken with a cell phone on a digital camera has become a trending topic on Instagram, becoming word of the year, as announced by the Oxford English Dictionary in 2013. So if you take any selfies, Instagram is one of the popular places to share it. Now, it's difficult to take a selfie of a company, <clears throat> unless you can get the whole building in the shot, I guess. <clears throat> the big thing about Instagram is, traditionally, Instagram <clears throat> um, has been in a square format of graphics and often filtered. Um, the people behind Instagram basically saw that our phones are so advanced, they take such great photos that they're too perfect. So the people behind it wanted to um, give a sense of nostalgia to the photos. Uh, like classic Polaroid photos that were square rather than the traditional 4x6 four by, four by photos instead of the rectangular traditional photos. Uh, Instagram photos are square. Now that has changed very recently. Uh, now you can upload any size photo, but I still use the traditional style of square photos. It just helps you th to think artistically in a different way. Instead of having a wide image to work with, you have a square image which could help you be creative. And oftentimes there's a filter applied. This is um, a little bit out of date also. These are the, from 2011, these are the filters available. The, the normal filter looks like that, and then you add these different filters, the Walden filter, Kelvin, Toaster, Inkwell, etc. They add filters every once in a while, they remove filters once in a while. There was a filter that I really liked called Gotham that they removed. That was a very harsh black and white filter. This one's too wimpy. It was one that was much more high contrast and tough, but they took it out. They might add it back, they might add different versions, but this is optional. You don't have to add filters to your photos, but this is part of the character of Instagram. Square photos that have a filter. And I remember speaking with my dad a couple years ago when I was showing him this stuff, and he said, why do the photos look so ugly? And I say, well, what do you mean ugly? He said, well, this one looks overexposed, and this one looks underexposed, and this one looks blurry. Why is that? And I said, well, that's the style. That's, that's the style of, and the character of Instagram that you're going to be adding these filters to make it look different than that plain old... There's the normal photo, and it's very you know, realistic, but then you add something like this, you give it a different style. Kelvin, you know, this uh, yellow-toned, distressed edge style, or you go with toaster with like, with like a bright spot in the middle. And my dad said, yeah, well, back in my day, if a photo came out like that, we'd throw it away. That was a mistake. <laughs> Nowadays, people want this because our photos come out, could technically come out so perfect on these mobile devices that now there's these filters. And Instagram wasn't the first to make up filters, but it's the most popular, definitely. Um, so, that is the article you can look at on your own about Instagram. Let's check out the website, Instagram.com. Well, this is interesting. I'm, I'm about to go to Instagram, and these are the suggestions that it gives me. Instagram login, Instagram search, Instagram husband. <laughs> Instagram options. So I'm going to go to Instagram.com. From the home page, there's not much to do, really. It basically says log in or download the app. But there's no method to create an account on the website. That's why I had said last week, bring a device, because we're going to need to create an account via the device. And it's on, the, uh, it's on iPhone, it's on uh, Android, it's on Windows Phone. What I would go to the home page for is to check out the blog. 
Let's check this out a moment. Go to Instagram.com and then at the bottom click on blog. What you're going to see here is then a variety of photos and inspiration and blog posts. This was posted today. Jack underscore underscore Hogan has an account on Instagram and you will see that Instagram accounts have the same sort of um, nomenclature as Twitter in that it's an at name. So if I'm Victor on Twitter, I would be at Victor on Twitter. If I'm on Instagram, same thing, at Victor on Instagram. Uh, so that would be familiar. And if you are uh, a business that really values your brand, your brand name, and you need your name, uh, then that's why you. Uh, my advice is always, as best as you can and as soon as possible, claim the name of your business on different networks. Even if you're not going to use Instagram, even if you're not going to use Snapchat, or Sue, or Vine, or Rabadaba, etc., you, I recommend that you claim your name there in case you're going to use it in the future so someone else doesn't take it. I'm sure he wanted to be at Jack Hogan, simply Jack Hogan, but someone else took that name. So he said, okay, I'll be Jack underscore Hogan. Whoops, someone took that. So he's Jack underscore underscore Hogan. He's got two underscores in his <laughs> name. And sometimes you have to put a number and that sort of thing. So a bunch of photos, blog post uh, about his inspiration, I suppose. Uh, another expose on another person, where at where love is illegal. Uh, the hidden talent of Miniature Tiger's lead singer, Charlie Brand. So this is basically inspiration and uh, suggestions for hashtags. Hashtag my story. The point of hashtags, if you know about Twitter, is that that's how you find a community who is interested on a particular topic, they're grouped together, basically, by the keyword, the hashtag. So that's the blog. Okay, so uh, Instagram traditionally has been square photos with a filter, as we're seeing. Eventually, Instagram then offered the ability actually for video. So you can upload videos to Instagram. The big uh, difference there between other video sharing sites is you can add a filter, just like a photo, but the, photo, the videos also are, are limited in, in shape and they're further limited in length. You have a maximum length of 15 seconds. So your videos can only be 15 seconds. And people sometimes think when they hear about this, oh, what can I do in 15 seconds? I can't put together a cool video in 15 seconds. There's so many ways to do videos at 15 seconds. So many creative people and examples. Simply turning it on and recording 15 seconds nonstop is a viable thing to do. But I've seen so many creative types of videos because what you can do is record a little bit, pause it, record another bit, pause it, record another bit, pause it, and string together different angles, for example, into a 15-second video that has different shots and music in the background and all of that. People can get very creative. seen much more creative but the result here 307 likes uh, 57 comments and then odd kid out with 11,000 followers so to show an example of what an Instagram account looks like because on the website we can look at the blog and such and we can log in if we've got an account. Let's do this. Just uh, hopefully it's safe for work stuff to show. Let's try this. Up on the address, you can go to Instagram.com slash odd kid out. So when you create, when we create an account in a moment, everyone will have an Instagram homepage like this. 
this is relatively new. For a long time, Instagram was very exclusionary. You could only use Instagram on an iPhone. So it was like that for a couple of years. Then eventually they released, they released the Android version. Um, and then the Windows version. And then they created an online, an online portal. The catch still, though, is that you need to create the account via uh, an app, via the iPhone, Android, or Windows phone. But here we can see a preview of what this, of if I have followed Odd Kid out, this is what I would see on my stream, some videos, some photos. If you hover over the pictures, you will see stats, a little heart, and a little speech bubble. Just like every social network, there are usually three or four main interactions. Some form of a like, here it's a heart, some form of a comment, this one's got 54, and some form of a share, as in, I like this so much, I'm going to share it with my followers so they can see it. So Instagram has all of those. And then, of course, the fourth interaction is the follow. If you take this class and my other classes on social media and my SEO class, I'm always talking about the value of social media as a way to build an audience. This person here has 11,000 followers. If we take 1% of that, um, this, the, the theory goes that 1% of your audience is going to be the most dedicated group. So if I've got 100 followers, 1% 1 of that is one person. Out of 100 followers, one could be dedicated enough to buy my product, subscribe to my newsletter, donate to my, to my cause, etc. So I'm curious here, out of 11,200, what is 1%? 112 people. So uh, is 112 people enough to sustain him economically? Possibly. They donate, they buy merchandise, they go to his shows or whatever he does. But that's why brands, that's why companies are in pursuit of followers. Regular people more for ego and fleeting internet fame, but companies, because those could be the potential uh, sales and such. And that's a very conservative number, 1%. Maybe this particular user, it's more like 25% of his audience is the most active and passionate. And 25% then out of 11,000 is much larger. 2,800 people. I don't know, maybe 70% of his audience is ready to buy his albums. But that's why we're always trying to get followers. Because if you think about it in the most conservative terms of the 1% of your followers are going to be the most passionate. So it looks like people really like to see a badly cropped stationary photo of him playing his kit. 1,100 likes on that. 873 on that one and 1,164 on that. 15-second beat series. On some of these posts that he's made, for example, he's got this hashtag, hashtag fact, InstaBeats. Anyone can make up a hashtag, um, and we'll talk about uh, looking up trending hashtags and such. show one more account and then we'll create an account together. Um, this is one of our clients. If you go to Instagram.com, aquí es Texcoco. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in this class before, uh, but in my classes oftentimes I show examples from real clients because again what I do here in, in the classes, I also do it for real clients. Uh, what I'm teaching about Instagram is what we would do for real clients. So it's getting close to lunchtime. I apologize, but here's a restaurant client, a kiosk couple, and um, they or we they have an account and we manage it. And um, 
we'll see that we can set up branding, we can set up our logo and a biography and such. That's very important to do because you don't want to be the generic blue icon always because then how are you going to entice people to follow you? If you don't have any branding or any personality, how will you entice people to follow you? We talked about that in LinkedIn last time. You want to have your profile filled in as much as possible to provide value to someone that wants to link with you. So there's the name of the company, that's their Instagram address, at Instagram, a biography, there's a link and a location attached. So that's valuable because then uh, if you actually want to, if this company actually wants to sell its tacos, you can't sell them through Instagram. You can't sell your products through Instagram just yet. Big companies might be able to, Macy's and such, but uh, we are not able to at the moment. So you still want some sort of link back to your website or to a contact form. People think about this very literally once they get it, but I'm going to say let's think outside the box. Most networks give you a way to add an address or a link. You don't have to always have your address directly to your home page. You can change that whenever you want to have it linked directly to your shop page, directly to your contact page, directly to a landing page of the sale of the month. I follow a few interesting Instagram accounts. There's this one that I follow who's all about raffling comic books. And so he's got a link on his bio right here directly to enter the raffle. You don't have to take it right to the home page if the main action you want them to accomplish is to sign up for the raffle. So we'll see how to edit that, of course. You'll see statistics. How many posts? How many photos or videos have been uploaded? How many followers you have? And how many have you are you following? Just like every network. That's like Twitter, that's like Instagram. It's a little different on LinkedIn. You just have the one value of connections. Uh, but on pretty much every network you see something like that. How many times have you contributed? How many followers do you have to show for it? And how many are you following? And just like Twitter, you don't have to follow every account that follows you. Uh, LinkedIn is a one-to-one -one relationship. If someone wants to connect with you and they do that friend request, that connection request, and you approve it, you're both connected. You'll both see each other's content. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and almost every other network is a one-to-many type of network in that I can have 400 followers, but I only am following back 10. And that's fine. You don't have to follow every account that, you, that follows you. And as I said in uh, LinkedIn, using the network selfishly, what is the value for you to follow accounts? I'm not going to follow an account personally and for the businesses that we manage. We're not really going to follow an account that doesn't have their picture filled in, that doesn't have a, a, an interesting biography, and more important, that doesn't post interesting or relevant things. On this account, it's following other restaurants or foodies or chefs and such, and sometimes customers. You see a bunch of photos, they've got the filters, they're square. There's often the effect also in an Instagram photo of a, of a focus blur. You see here there's parts of the photo that are blurry. Um, that's pretty popular. And Instagram allows you to activate that. If your original photo was all completely sharp, that's fine. But if you want to blur, if you want to focus on here and blur the background, we'll be able to do that with a click of a button on Instagram. So you see all of these products, events. This is an obvious example here. There's like a circle in the middle that's in focus, and the things around the edges are blurred behind the scenes shot. There's a video right there. Shots of that Quesa Taco, which is a newest taste sensation, which is a taco that instead of a tortilla, it's wrapped in cheese. So that's cheese. It's very tasty.
this one uh, as an idea also. This, um, I, I'm not sure if, if directly through Instagram at the moment, I have to double check it, that you can create a sort of a collage. There's many ancillary apps that will let you do that. You download an app to um, add filters that don't exist in Instagram, for example, or to create collages and such, and then you can upload that to Instagram. You don't have to take a photo at that moment and then upload it. The original, you know, the original version of Instagram was that, that it's an instant photograph, Instagram. I take a photo at that moment, I filter it, I upload it. But then it was highly requested to be able to upload a photo that had previously been taken. So you can take a photo today and then think about the photo and then tomorrow crop it and filter it and then upload it. And then of course you can take it to the next extreme in that I'm going to take a photo with my amazing Canon camera on a tripod, then I'm going to open it in Photoshop and filter it amazingly, and then I'm going to upload it to my phone, and then Instagram. You can do that as well. However you want to run your Instagram is fine. But here, the point is before and after. This client, a hundred weeks ago, um, opened uh, a restaurant in Los Angeles, a new location. They started in Tijuana, they went to San Diego, then they opened in Los Angeles a hundred weeks ago before and after, or after and before. This is what the location looked like when it was an Italian food restaurant when they bought it. And then this is what it looks like. Uh, no, it's backwards. That's the Italian food restaurant before it was changed. And then that's it in progress. So what would be perfect would be to do a TBT. Uh, look at how we were 100 weeks ago, and look at how we are now. So we're going to create the account right now, but any, any general questions at this point? Okay, again, you're going to need the app. You can download the app from the App Store. I'm going to switch my camera here. Again, it's not going to be as nice looking as we've been accustomed to, but it will get the job done. So you can... Uh, Use Instagram on iPhone, Android, iPad. So I've got uh, I've got an Android phone also, and I've got the app right there. Um, I'm going to use my iPad over here. So if you don't have the app, you can go over to the App Store. You can get the you can get it from your from your device's App Store. Um, you would just be searching for Instagram. One t one tip: if you're using um, if you're using an iPad, uh, there there the Instagram app is technically not an an uh, an iPad app. So if I'm searching for Instagram on the iPad, for example, it's not really going to show up. Uh, you have to filter it. Right now it's showing iPad only apps. I have to switch it over to iPhone apps because technically it's not for the for the iPad. Uh, iPad iPhone. So then under iPhone I would find it and it's got 1,500 reviews. I, don't see that they show how many downloads, but it's got millions of downloads. And if there's a if there's an app that's different, that looks different, if it's not Instagram, if it's not from the official Instagram company, don't download it. Because other people, other companies can create apps that attach to Instagram, but they're not officially from Instagram. Only the official Instagram app will let you post. To Instagram. Other apps will let you look at Instagram, but only the official Instagram app will let you post to it. Question? No. Okay. To find the app, you said go to the app store. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason I see that search button where you can actually find the app. 
And uh, did you have a question earlier? Um, usually when I do this for a client, I don't do it through Facebook because I feel I don't get the result that I'm looking for because Facebook has already so much baggage that comes with it regarding your accounts or any connected accounts. So I would rather create it just via email, which I think is more direct. So that's the person. So what we'll do is we will take a moment to at, at least download the app and then we'll go about creating it together. We cannot, we can't have multiple accounts, but we can't use them at the same time. Thank you. 
I am going to move on now. So the only thing you needed to do was to have the app downloaded, and then I'm going to go through the process of signing up. If you already got an account, great. Just sit tight. If you're going to set one up right now with me, then we'll set one up. But let me get this going. So basically, um, I downloaded the app, and it's here. Okay, sign up or log in. Guys? Um, I've got sign up or log in and if I've got an account I can log in one thing that is always asked that I will address is that if you've got more than one account there's gonna be a little bit of inconvenience of logging out of one account and logging in to the other account at the moment the Instagram apps don't give us a way to manage multiple accounts um, I, I think that's gonna be added very soon because Instagram is so popular now, especially with businesses, especially since they've added promoted posts. And so many times people have to manage more than one, so I bet they will add a way to do that easily. So then, if I'm going to sign up, if I'm going to create an account, it's going to ask me either to enter an email or log in with Facebook. You can do either, but I'm going to suggest just to log in or set up an account with just a pure email address, not to use the Facebook because the Facebook is attached to your main Facebook account and that might come with all the baggage of those connections. Your friends and family might not be the audience you're trying to reach on Instagram. Yes? This is uh, going to your phone. Phone number. Put your phone number. So you're saying the reason you really would want to go to set up Yes, if you've got a business Facebook account, 
perhaps then I would do it that way. Um, but you have to be careful because it might be very easily, you might select the wrong account and you collect and you connect your personal instead. Guys, I appreciate you helping each other, but could you just keep it down a little bit? Right there? Okay. Uh, so I would recommend just to use your regular email, and I suppose some of you are getting the option of using a phone number, which I suppose is new. So in any event, you want to set that up. I'm just going to put in a fake email address. So I'm just going in with a fake email address, and then it's asking for a username and password. Username is that unique name that we had up on the address. When I, sh when I showed Instagram.com slash oddkid, that username, that address, came from username. When I showed that client, Akiastexcoco, that's the username. And very similar to Twitter, we have the username and the full name. The username is that at name with the at symbol that is the unique name that only one account in the whole world can have. And there's already 400 million other accounts out there, so if you want the name, the username Victor, I'm probably five years too late. You checked it, Victor is not available. Um, so whatever your brand company name is, you should keep it consistent. If you've previously created an account, we can change this stuff, no problem, we'll get to that. But you want a name here. Let's see what will work. I'm going to put Victor C123. Is that available? Nope. What about 1239? Okay, good enough. So this is what I'm saying about if you've got a brand that you are consistent through all your social media, you want to be consistent here too, but it might have been taken. It's a very popular network. Uh, I forgot here also. You can add a photo. So if you've got a photo that you can upload, or I believe you can, uh, you can import it from Facebook, from Twitter, take a photo, choose from your library. Uh, I'm going to take a photo. Hmm. If it doesn't let me at the moment, that's okay. I can do it later. But I would want to add a photo in my other branding as soon as possible so that I'm not like a generic icon like everyone. Question. Full name or username? Well, let me get to that screen so I can show you because I'm creating an account as well. Let me put in a password. It's going to confirm. Okay, so once I get to this screen, it's saying for me, full name, optional, phone number optional. It may be different for you guys for different reasons. Um, so phone number, I'm not going to put a phone number. It's optional. But I could. Uh, the reason for putting a phone number is that then I can get found by uh, people that know that phone number. If I've got a business and they know the phone number and they search for me on Instagram with that phone number, I could be found. The phone number is also valuable in case you get locked out of your account and you need to retrieve your login, they can send you a text message. So more and more websites are using this system where adding a phone number is extra security. Um, full name, what I'm going to say about that, it's optional, but I'm going to recommend it. I'm going to recommend a full name because over on my username, I had to settle for Victor1239. But I still want to be known as Victor Campos or Victor's Bakery. So here is where I can type in the full title of my business with spaces and capitalization and symbols. You know, if you've got emoji and such, you can put in your emoji icons. There we go. So my name is going to have that icon. And again, if you already have an account, I'll show you where you can edit this a little later. I'm just going through the process of a brand new user. Um, notice that it doesn't line up. My username is Victor1239. That's fine. But my, my full name is Victor's Bakery Party. 
So I can do, I can make those different, that's fine. And I can change those either or whenever I want. I'm going to click Next, phone number optional, so I'll skip that. On the top right corner, there's the next arrow. Yes? So where do you get the icons that you put in there? Do you have an iPhone or an Android? There is an icon somewhere in your settings. Maybe during the break we can check it. Uh, but there's going to be some way for you to switch your keyboard, and then you're going to have a keyboard of icons. I just have like smiley faces. And pretty limited. I don't have a big selection. It depends on the Android phone also. There might be that limitation depending on your device, but we can look into it because obviously I want this money tongue money icon. <laughs> we just added a bunch of new ones recently. Oh, like the rolling eyes. Anyway, I'm going to go next because I don't want to add a phone number. Find Facebook friends to follow. So they're really going to push Facebook. Guess why? That's the parent company. What could be valuable about connecting with Facebook is you could reach another audience. But here is really, unless you're careful, it's going to connect with your personal Facebook account rather than the business one. So I'm going to skip the Facebook integration for the moment because not everyone has a business Facebook account. I'm going to skip that. Find contacts to follow. Yeah. Possibly, possibly she might, if she, if she knows what she was doing, she probably did go into the business one and connect that way. She might have not had the option to go into the That's right. Mm -hmm. Here, um, it's going to say connect with that. It might be uh, find contacts. If you would like to connect your contacts, this is the contacts on my phone, my address book. If I want to share my address book with Instagram, and in a sense with Facebook, um, do I want to do this? And the reason you might want to do this is to connect with people that you know that are on Instagram. But I always say in these classes, are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Because how many times are you going to promote to them my product again, my great idea again, my um, nonprofit again? You're always going to be trying to get new customers, new clients, new donations, and your friends and family are only going to go so far. So this is up to you to do, but I'm going to skip, and it can be done later. When you're brand new so that your account doesn't look like a, like a ghost town, this is always the problem of any social network. When you create a new network, it's a ghost town, especially if you don't connect with people. You don't see anything, nothing's interesting, and therefore you give up on it. The networks nowadays are getting better that when you create a brand new account, there's some sort of like jump start, head start, where are you interested in art and design? Are you interested in graphic design, photography? There's these interests. Because when I choose some interests, you can choose as many as you want, it'll suggest why not follow this account or that account? And there is value in my business account following other accounts. I want followers, that's a higher priority, but it's still valuable for me to follow accounts because as we'll see, that's part of inspiration. What am I going to post again this week, this day? Let me see what my contemporaries and competitors are posting. And that gives me a great idea for me to post my version of that. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to choose a few of these, fantasy and sci-fi, collecting. Wait a minute, this is Victor's Bakery. So we'll do food and drink. I'll just do food and drink for the moment. And uh, art. Continue. Should tell me suggested accounts. Yes. Or you didn't it didn't let you choose any interest well, that's okay now that we're here let me explain this one 
Um, so I've got these suggested accounts within the category of food and whatever I've chosen. So all of these things are being posted regarding food. The point of this, again, is you do want to follow some accounts for inspiration. How many is up to you? I would say five is a good number, and as you use it, you could follow more, of course. But I'm just going to choose... I'm going to click Follow on a few of these. Pretty amazing cakes. So I'm just going to select a few accounts. Hipster Hello Keely, why not? So I'm going to, I selected a few and then I'm going to click the next button. And then I'm finally in the main Instagram interface. There's plenty to look at and understand how it works, and then we'll talk about how to get followers and hashtag trends and all of that, of course. What I want to do is take our first break just to make sure we're all on the same page. When we come back, I'll go through the anatomy of Instagram, what the different icons do, how to post, how to post effectively, all of that stuff. So. Um, it's 10.40, we'll take a 10-minute break, we'll be back at 10.50, and then we'll go on.